What is up, All Stars 456, and everyone out in the world wide web? Thank you so much for joining us today at So Hills Kids. Thank you for watching this video, whether it's a Sunday, a Tuesday, a Thursday night, or a Saturday morning. You've come to the right place for some great content, I personally think, but I make it all, so that's biased. Anyways, welcome guys, welcome, welcome, and thank you for joining us. As you know, we've been following the Israelites on their journey through, well, everything. We started at the beginning with Adam and Eve. We met Noah, we met Moses, we've met all of these great characters. And so right now, our Israelite friends are in the wilderness. They have been promised the promised land, right? But they keep complaining. They keep taking their eyes off God. And we're really going to talk about distractions today. And so I wanted you to do something for me. I need you to go find a notepad, a pen, whatever you can write on nearby, and I need you to list your top three distractions. Then you come back and we'll talk about those distractions, okay? So pause the video here and come right back. All right, you've listed your top three distractions. Let me talk about mine. I would say my number one distraction is my phone. Guys, my phone can distract me so easily. Number two is probably video games. I love to play video games. And sometimes when I have to be at the home, maybe I should be doing my dishes or my laundry. I'm like, eh, I really just want to play video games. Number three is just simple daydreaming. There's a lot of times where I'm working and I need to, you know, whatever, I've got to make the next video and I'm just sitting there, la da da, off my own little world doing my little thing. Here's the thing. We all get distracted. You guys have your top three distractions. But we all get distracted. But what happens when we get distracted from something that's really important? Our school, right? Our chores we're supposed to do, or, or maybe even God himself. What happens when we get distracted? We're going to look today at the Israelites and what they ended up having to do when they got distracted. So let's check that out. So our verse today comes from Numbers 21, okay? We've been in Numbers a little bit. It's kind of telling the story of the people of Israel as they're wandering around in the wilderness. Now, let's talk about this here. So you see... The Israelites are in the wilderness, and they're going somewhere, right? It says they sent out to Mount Hor, right? But here's the issue. We know the Israelites. They got impatient, and so they started complaining. Now, if you know this story, God has provided the Israelites with water, with food, with guidance, with victory over their enemies. God has provided them so much, and so they're complaining really upset God. So to punish them, God sent snakes, right? Ugh, I don't like any of that. And the people didn't either. And they realized, oh, maybe I shouldn't have complained. And so they cried out to God for forgiveness. And here's what went down. So it said, um, the Lord told Moses, make a replica of a poisonous snake and attach it to a pole. All who are bitten will live if they simply look at it. So Moses made the snake, attached it to a pole, and anyone who was bitten by a snake could look at the bronze snake and be healed. So, here's the thing. These people were distracted, right? They were distracted by their own complaining and grumbling, by wanting other things. They said, why don't we just go back to Egypt, right? Remember where there were slaves and they had nothing, they couldn't do anything without asking someone else? I don't think that's what they really wanted. They just wanted to complain. They were distracted. And we get distracted, too. There's a lot of things that can distract us in this world. Some can be, I mean, better than the others, right? I can get distracted by my phone. I can get distracted by the schoolwork I need to do. But the reality is, none of this should distract us from the one true God, right? None of this should distract us from seeing God for who he is. Like I said, the people of Israel, just like us, got distracted. And here's the reality. We sometimes get distracted in our own lives, right? Like I made the example earlier, maybe someone asked you to do your chores and Instead, you played video games, or someone asked you to work on your homework, and instead you wanted to color, or draw, or read your book, or, you know, there's a lot of things that can distract us, but there's also things that can distract us from the Lord, and that's a bigger deal. You see, when we're distracted from the Lord, we're separated, and we can't draw close to Him. I've got an example for you guys. So I've got an example for you guys. I've got this nice cup of water, and I'm thirsty, so I'm going to take a sip out of my straw. Just, mm. That's some good water. But here's the thing. Just like the straw. Pretend the straw is keeping our focus on God. If we try and add something else, maybe we try and add our school or our work as something that's just as important or maybe more important than God. Right? Um, maybe it's video games. Maybe it's hanging out with our friends. But we try and add this one thing to our lives. All of a sudden, I can't drink any of the water. Why is that? Well, because I'm focused on two different things, right? 
I'm sucking outside of the cup and inside of the cup. And so my focus is broken, right? It's divided. And God calls us to have our focus on him 100%. So when we want to be distracted, we have to think about ways that we can focus back in on him. I read my Bible every morning, and I have to tell you guys, there's some mornings where I really just want to sit on my phone and just uh, scroll through YouTube or, or whatever it is, and I really don't want to read. But when we prioritize God, we can grow with him. That time I spend with him in the morning is so important for the rest of my day. And if I didn't spend time in the morning, it, I feel its effects throughout the whole day. I'm more grumpy, I'm more irritable, and that's because I had not focused on God. So the people of Israel were called to focus on the snake, right? They had rejected God and complained about him, but he still loved them and sent something to save them. And he sends someone to save us as well, and that is Jesus. So even though our focus may be everywhere, from video games to school to working to all of these things in our life, when we focus on the one true God, through Jesus Christ, we are able to draw closer to him and build a bigger relationship with him. So guys, as always, if you want to check out the full Bible video, you can check it out after this. If not, thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'm going to see you on next week's episode. Bye. Moses and the Israelites traveled in the wilderness on a long journey. The people were impatient and they complained. Why did you lead us into the wilderness? We're going to die here. There's no bread. There's no water. We don't like the food we have. So God responded by sending venomous snakes that bit the Israelites. Many of the people died. The Israelites went to Moses and they said, we sinned by complaining. Please talk to God for us. Ask him to take away the snakes. So Moses spoke to God for the people. God told Moses what to do. Make a snake image and put it on a pole. And when anyone who is bitten looks at it, he will recover. So Moses did what God said. He made a bronze snake and mounted it on a pole. And whenever someone was bitten, that person looked at the bronze snake and they recovered. God sent snakes to punish the people, but anyone who was bitten could look at the snake on the pole and then live. We deserve to die because of our sin, but anyone who looks to Jesus on the cross and trusts in him will live forever with God.